Hey everyone, welcome in to a, another daily editorial here on the KE Report. I'm getting an update from Graphene Manufacturing Group, traded on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol GMG. I am chatting with the CEO, Craig Nickel. Now, in this interview, look, I, I am going to get some of your questions answered that you have all sent in to me, but I've noticed with all these questions in all the different divisions of this company that I really think we need to take a step back, take a big picture overview of the status of each division and some of the big milestones that investors should be paying attention to here. So Craig, we're going to start off with batteries, go to the thermal XR, go to lubricants and also talk about graphene production. So let's start off with the batteries. One of our most recent interviews involved the joint development agreement with Rio Tinto and the focus more on producing pouch packs. Can you Give us an update here on uh, the pilot plant. What else is going on within this pouch pack focus for the batteries, please? Thanks, Corey. Great to be on. Yeah, look, the pouch cell progress is um, uh, quite good. We're looking through a number of the cells now we, we make uh, every week. We're still working through the manual process um, in the laboratory uh, with our scientists. And we're, we're working through the implementation, the commissioning, of our auto stacker, which is, um, is, has landed and we're just looking through the final commissioning of that, which should then be able to work through a number of um, other increases in volume once that comes on board. And then we should be able to sit with about a 25 layer pouch cell. And then when we're at a 25 layer pouch cell, well, that'll mean that we can have a, a, a battery that's, that's a cell that's testable by a number of um, different companies, including uh, Rio. So that's our target for the near term, is to get to a 25 layer pouch cell um, with the auto stacker, which we already have. That will provide us with um, one of the first milestones that we need to achieve under, under the Rio Tinto joint development agreement. All right, let's also quickly touch on the coin cell division. I know, again, the focus has been more on pouch packs, but any updates, any progress in coin cells, please? Yeah, coin cells are, are still being made from a point of view of R&D. They're typically made even by the largest companies in the world in this space um, to, to, to test new types of um, designs. And so we still have that um, working. The absolute vast majority of our potential customers want to see us making pouch cells and in some years' time, obviously, to, to make them and, and sell to them. So coin cells have, from a sales point of view, certainly dropped off our focus and pouch cells is definitely the focus, but obviously we've, we're developing those through a multi-layer now. Okay. So as you said, you need to develop these and then test them and get them out to some other uh, potential consumers. Is that the steps towards revenue or is it more about forming partnerships for the battery, the pouch cell division? Yeah. So we're pretty much doing both. So we're working through the steps to, to get to a pouch cell pack plant that we could then invest in to make that into customer testable and then obviously potential buying uh, purchase agreements from that. But also at the same time, we have got other partnerships in different sectors from the mining and minerals, obviously, that uh, Rio Tinto's in. Um, and we're talking to a number of large companies in, in a number of different vertical segments of the battery market. And that's also quite interesting progress. So I think we'll, 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 we'll go across both well, to keep um, driving our pouch cell outcome. And then we'll also look to manage the, the potential other um, jo yeah, joint development agreements coming through that obviously be in similar but um, adjacent type vertical segments uh, to where Rio's is. So I guess one final follow-up then when it comes to getting a pouch pack produced and then testing it, is there a general time frame on this? Yeah, the, the, the pouch cell we're aiming to get done in the next year. Then we look to put that into a pack, a small module, to be able to then get it to a proof of concept for Rio Tinto to see. And that's in the following year. So generally, that's that, that, that's uh, holistically what we're trying to do. Um, we're making good progress through the pouch cell development phase. We, at this point, don't see any reason why we wouldn't hit that. 
once you have that, then you have then likely thousands of cells. You've tested them in, in a pack, you know, in a pack formation, and then you can you can then start to look at you know how to use scale after that if everything is successful. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's talk about the Thermal XR division. Starting off with the May twenty fourth news release. The company signed distribution agreements with four separate distributors focused in Thailand, Singapore, Indonesia, and South Korea. What does this mean for bringing Thermal XR to consumers towards revenue? Yeah, it's the first uh, step of uh, distributors coming through and reselling into the HVAC market for our Thermal XR, which is a completely new technology. Um, it's a it's a big step. Some of these guys have been working for a few years now on TXR. Some of them are fresh and new, but they've got contacts to and experience to deploy it in their country. The the more data we have, the easier it is for, to sell this product. And we've certainly got now a lot of data, a lot of external verification that this product shifts heat faster than without. And that's enabling distributors also to sell it faster as well. So we're very happy with that progress. Um, and, and that's enabling us to, to look through some, you know, you know, building our revenue, which is obviously what we're, we're on a phase of doing now. Now, there was also news on June 1st that announced some independent testing on heat transfer and energy savings. Uh, this showed the potential for Thermal XR in a range of applications. Are there any other additional studies underway that need to happen before, I guess, you bring in some customers? It's an evolution. People need um, different levels of data, different levels of surety, uh, depending on you know what what they understand and also their risk tolerance and, and the company's risk tolerance. But we're certainly seeing the early adopters coming in, and some of them, you know, at the very large companies are looking at doing global uh, global product deals uh, in their sector, and then others are, you know, very very specific. They might have you know a region that they would want to bring this to um, and, and you know, use that product to kind of almost revolutionise what they're doing in their, in their sector. We're seeing all different types and certainly all the data just helps, changes the way people see this product and, and it provides a much speedier way to progress. So in terms of the next big milestones for Thermal XR, is it more distribution agreements? Is it partnerships with I guess, larger companies to just incorporate thermal XR coatings on their products, what would it be? It's it's a range. Um, And in different sectors, uh, we're working with um, LNG producing companies. We're working with various different types of asset companies. We're working with energy saving companies around the world. We're working with OEMs who who want to put it on their existing to be released product and then product that's sitting in the market already and sell it back to the customer. Uh, there's, there's a full range of all different types of uh, industries, which is really exciting and, and, and it is uh, it's definitely uh, building momentum. And we've just announced this week, um, just on the social media, uh, another sector that we're working on, which is uh, the ability to, to increase the power outcome from solar cells. Just by painting a thermal XR on the back of solar cells, they they can get up to four and a half percent extra power per day. In some peak of the day, up to ten percent uh, increase in power, and by dropping the temperature of that cell by about twenty degrees Celsius. So that's a substantial increase with a small amount of work, and you know that's just another sector that we're we're likely you know going to see some sales into. Let's move on to the lubricants division. We don't talk much about lubricants, but in terms of revenue, in terms of growth potential, just give us a broad update. What's going on in the lubricants division? Yeah, the lubricants area is um, is getting sales small in Southeast Asia and straight to lubricant blending companies who are then selling it out into the market. And we're getting good, really good feedback. And that's that, that's very exciting because we've got some very large companies who we're working with who we can direct supply this to because uh, we can come in on almost... Um, pretty much any oil um, on the top as a concentrate. It's 100 times concentrate, so we would supply it to someone and they would effectively uh, reduce it down 100 times. And it ends up being at 0.01% by weight of the graphene in the oil. So it's a very small minor dosage in the end. And we're seeing really good um, responses from customers on on their fuel bills. And then that's by, by reducing the friction 
on the sides of the piston walls. That's it. that's what we currently pr propose as how this is working. We're doing more demonstration projects ourselves to understand that with um, with university verification, which we should come out you know shortly to to talk through. Uh, but it is a product that is quite transformational. Again, a bit like the thermal XR, you have to do, see the data to see to understand it, and then be able to you know see how you can implement that and. That's again, we're going to go through the early adopters in, in industry first, which we already got some lining up, which is great. Now, graphene production, the scaling up of graphene production. I know this is critical to the underlying companies. You're using this graphene in your products. What's the status of uh, your ability to scale up graphene and the overall production process? Yeah, so we have our current project uh, that we're putting in, in place and we're about 70% um, or so complete. It's progressing to finish at the end of the year and we've got um, a number of um, good signs that that's coming through the way we want it. It's got uh, a number of um, opportunities. Obviously that graphene plant will build, will make graphene for our batteries and also our thermal XR and G lubricants. It's got the capacity to, to eventually get to about five tonne five tonne per annum, that's when you're fully scaled out. So that won't be happening by the end of the year, but it will happen as we fully scale out. And there's something like $15 million a tonne available uh, in revenue potential. So you know, the potential to make good money from that plant when it's fully scaled you know, is, quite, is quite good uh, for, the, for the group. And I think that'll provide um, some good cash flow. Obviously, we've got the sales in, got to get the sales in and which we seem to get happening now. And then, you know, we obviously need to start to produce and, 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 and grow that plant, which is obviously what we're doing as well. So all in all, a good growth opportunity for us and start to bring in the cash flow once we connect it all through and really start to, to show some, some strong proof that, that what we're doing, you know, is saving, saving energy, saving emissions and through our value-added products. Now, Craig, would you ever consider simply selling your graphene, the end product, or even maybe even licensing out this production process? Yeah, it's a good question. I do get asked that a bit. Um, you know, we really went through a process early on to look at how we can sell our graphene in 2018, 2019. And it's very difficult to work with. It's, it's probably only 100 companies in the world that could probably do it easy. Even then, we'd have to help them. It's a very light product, tends to float away. And so, you know, when you do consider that, it's, it's a very limited market. It's got potential for, for that graphene to grow as, you know, a number of different segments, but it, it still is a difficult thing to, to work with even when you do grow those segments. What we've shifted to are these products that we make far more money uh, per kilogram, thousands of times per kilo if we just sold it then um, through, through as graphene powder. And then what we then do is, is give a solution that, that obviously provides a complete solution that pretty much any company in the world can now buy, can use. So they don't have to find a way to use the powder. They can, they can use the engine oil top up. They can use the thermal XR on, the engine, on their uh, air conditioning. And of course, once we developed it and fully got to the scale we want and, and tested all the products you know, around the battery, well, you know, we can also sell that directly to companies too. So. So we've gone from 100 companies that could potentially use that graphene to actually almost any company in the world can buy our products now. And that was the intent for vertical integration. And so hence, you know, selling our very highly opportune powder to other people, it probably won't happen. I'm not saying it, it, it definitely won't happen, but it probably won't happen because the opportunities for us in, in our products are, are, is so vast that we likely wouldn't um, want to want to share that right now otherwise well craig before i get you out of here then any other major updates anything else that we should be aware of that's happening at the company simply because again a lot of different divisions here that we've recapped but big picture what are the main key catalysts in the near term yeah this uh we are obviously looking to push the growth in in sales and now in the next um six months you know we look to 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 finalize and sign the Distributed agreement for America for HVAC sector. We're obviously pushing through a number of uh, large B2B customers for LNG uh, and other other sectors to be able to do some projects there. 
and obviously trying to push the and progress the battery to to get to announcement around it, you know 25 layer and and that that battery has proven to to work well under the specifications. So a number of things that are that are coming through. We're building our uh, and finalising our blend plant for Thermal XR, and also we're we're obviously building our expansion plant for graphene. So on top of all that, um, a number of projects as well. So look, the future is um, no doubt full of full of opportunity for catalysts, which is obviously what shareholders like to see. And you know we've got plenty others that are in the in the draw that are being percolating as well. So lots of lots of good things coming through. Thanks, Corey. All right. Well, thanks, Craig. I appreciate this update. Again, everyone, please keep sending me your questions. I'll have Craig back on again on the back of any news and to also answer your questions. In full disclosure, I am a shareholder of Graphene Manufacturing Group. And Craig, I'll chat with you again soon. So again, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, mate. Talk soon.